Hi and welcome! I'm Mrs. Cutefelts and today I'm going to show you how you can needle felt your own 2D winter landscape. For the base I suggest you use 100% wool felt. I do not suggest to use pre-felt, it should be felt. Then I'm framing my piece in hoop, so this is 20 cm bamboo hoop. And you will find a link where you can download my sketch for this picture in the description of this video and in pinned comment. You can scale it up or down if you choose different sized hoop. For the mat, there are different options here. You can use brush mat, wool felting mat or foam pad. I really suggest you use foam if this is your first 2D felt. I'm using only 40 triangle needles and there will be moments where I find multi-needle tool handy. I used all of these colors in my wool painting, but you don't have to use so many different shades. You can choose your own color palette. As it's a winter scene, whites will be really important. And you can be creative here. I'm using bleached white, which is really bright. And the other one, which is warmer, actually is core wool. It's slightly off-white. You can use your core wool if you have it. You can look into natural whites, how they differ. But it's really important to have different shades of white to add dimension to the sky and to the snow. For the shadows, I will be using brownish colors because they go together really well with my whites. But again, make sure that you check your own stash and put colors together and see how you feel about them. Maybe your whites go better with grays and blues. I also use some color blends I have left from other projects. It's just blended carded wool. I hand carded together it myself. And when you're hunting for the colors, don't forget to look into your locks, because they might have colors you don't have elsewhere. Like these here are ends from locks that don't have really defined curl, and I was super happy to use them in this painting, because this color is truly beautiful. The last tip I have for you before we dive in the actual felting is you can hand card the wool tops you have. You will need hand carders like these. These are actually tiny dog brushes I picked up. They're super cheap. By the way, all the things I mentioned today will be linked in the description of this video. But here is how to hand card. First, I'm using scissors and cutting the fiber shorter because my wool tops are quite long. Then I put the fiber on one of the carders and just brush it with the other one. This will help fibers to tangle and you will end up with carded wool pretty fast. I know that many of us purchased loads of wool tops when we just started felting and this is a great way how to use them up. After a while you can switch hands and this will help the fiber to tangle even more. Here are all the colors I hand carded today. Before I start to transfer my sketch, I check if the size of the inner hoop matches my print size, because sometimes my printer is just making fun of me. As I'm using white felt sheet, I could put my print underneath it and then trace the lines that I can see through. But I prefer a different method, so I'm placing the inner hoop onto the felt sheet and tracing all around it. This will give me a guide when later on I'm trying to transfer my image and it will help when felting too. Then I'm placing the print underneath it and aligning the circles. And during the daytime I will put this against the window and light coming through will help me to see the lines really well so it will be super easy to trace even the finer lines. Here are my results. 
as you can see the lines don't have to be super precise you can now go over if some of them feel just too light for you or add additional lines these lines will be completely covered with wool so don't worry you can now go ahead and change them however you see fitting and draw whatever would help you in the process I'm starting with the sky and I don't want to take attention away from the snow so I'm using this carded core wool which is natural white with quite yellow undertone I'm working with small amounts trying to lay it as flat as I can onto the felt sheet and my steps are quite shallow because we only need to tangle the fiber to the felt sheet I'm not really worried about the lines like covering them or leaving them bare because they are just guides our design is pretty abstract today so if this is your first wool painting don't worry it's okay if you accidentally covered them or if they're still really visible because we will add more and more layers to the design as I said I'm working with core wool and there is a little bit of vegetable matter in it so I'm trying to pick it out now and I encourage you to do the same because it will get harder later on. Here you can see me working with two needles together to speed up the process. You can also use a rubber band to hold them together. I'm just holding them with my fingers and this really helps to get the wool felted to the surface faster. I also encourage you to turn your piece around so the angle is more convenient for you and if you're holding your needles in a slight angle like you see me doing here you will get a really smooth surface and the fiber will really blend with the felt sheet one common mistake i made when i first started to create wool paintings was leaving the outer edge quite bare this really becomes visible when you're framing your piece and it can bring quite a lot of stress to you because adding any layers later on and blending them really well with the rest of the piece is not easy task to do so i really encourage you pay attention to these parts of your wall painting now when you're adding these base layers so you don't have to deal with it later on now I'm happy with my sky, the fiber is attached, it's not super smooth or really finished yet. I will go all over my piece again later on when I feel that I have added enough color. But for now it's attached and it's quite even in thickness. And now I can add some interest to my sky, otherwise it feels a bit flat. What you see me doing now is adding tiny amounts of really bright white and blue then I'm following it up with grey, orange and yellow to create some clouds. If you're not feeling super confident in this, remember that you can do this later on or you can just lay the wool down without felting it right away. You see, I'm now just laying it down and looking how I like the placement of the colors and how much of them I would like to see on my painting. Remember that they will blend with the rest of the wool when you felt it down, but overall this is quite forgiving process. If you add too much, you can always add a little bit of the base color on top of your design and it will help with the blending. I also suggest you work with small amounts because you can always add more later on, but it's harder to take something off. Now I will just felt everything down and see you in the next stage. Here is a little example of what we are going to work on next. My sky is attached to the felt sheet. It's not felted completely flat, so it's easier to blend the fibers. As you can see, there is some fluff left. But now we are going to work on the part of the sky that blends with the forest, suggesting that there are more trees behind that we just can't tell apart. 
So now I will zoom in a little bit and show you how I created this. I'm going to work on this little section right here between the two taller trees in the foreground. We are going to use this darker brown when it comes closer to the foreground trees and then move to the, some lighter brown shades when we move up higher in the sky. And I always love to add a little bit of grey in all shaded areas of my wool paintings. There are no strict rules about this, I'm just lightly laying down small amounts of wool in thin layers. I start with the lighter brown higher up in the sky, overlapping with the part that I already covered with wool, and then go closer to the triangles that symbolize the trees that we will create later. With the grey I'm really really trying to add small small amounts because when you felt it down it really creates the shade. See how different the fiber looks now compared to the section you see on the right? Because fiber now is not compressed and it looks way lighter. When you felt it down it will be darker so remember that you can add more later on but now we are just adding tiny tiny amounts. This is the base layer in this area and now I'm just taking two needles together and felting it down. And yes it will look super dark and not blended at all but don't worry about it. We are now fixing it using the color we used as a base for our sky. This will help the colors blend super well. Again, remember that when you felt it down, it will look lighter, more intense than it looks now, because fiber will be compressed. So work with small sections, in light layers, really thin layers, and remember that you can always add more later. Here I decided to use multi-needle tool just to make the process a bit faster and you don't have to watch this video for hours today. I also find it's easier on my hands if I sometimes switch to the multi-needle tool because it's bigger and easier to hold. If you don't own one, I have added link to the Amazon in the description of this video where you can purchase it. Here is how it looks after felting. I'm also adding a little bit of white as we already added it in the sky. I think it would help with the blending even more. I'm focusing it on the upper section of this blended area and I think it works lovely. When you feel like you're done with this section, carefully pull your painting off the mat and move to the next one. I will do the last section of camera and meet you in the next step. So here is my painting with background and sky complete and now we are going to move to the trees. You will notice that in the printable I offer you, there are trees that are a little bit behind others. We will start felting with these ones. I will start from the right side and actually there are no set rules for the colors to use. You can just use whatever you have or you feel like using. I always like to add some darker tones like this dark gray, dark brown dark purple and then contrast them with really vivid colors like this hot red right here. This will be my first three. I'm laying down thin layer wool just like we did before and you don't have to stress about the shape when you lay down the fiber. You will control the shape of your tree with the needle. We want to felt the triangle shape, so now I'm only stabbing within the bounds of the triangle I have marked before on my felt sheet. I'm starting with the edges and only then moving to the center. And even if I accidentally lose the triangle shape I have marked before, I am not worried because I can decide on the size of my little tree right now. The most important thing is to really focus on creating a triangle, so felting down wider base and creating really pronounced apex. 
like my little tree here lost its top so I'm now adding tiny amount of fiber and using my needles to guide it by tugging and pulling it to create the apex. When you're adding first layer for every tree, don't worry about blending the colors or anything, just focus on the shape. When I have established my gray base, I will now add few fibers of the colors I showed you before and blend them with my little tree. Again, I'm not felting outside the bounds of my tree to keep its shape defined and these colors will just add a little bit more depth. And here comes the red. Again, I want to remind you that there are no set rules, like here I felt that my little tree is a bit too dark, so I added this light brown on top and it really helped. As this is an abstract painting, feel free to follow your inspiration. As these little trees are further in the back and this is really snowy scene, I want to blend them with the background a bit. So I'm adding really thin layer and tiny amounts of the carded core wool I used for the sky. This will help with the blending. If you want to add a little bit more snowy effect, use really bright white, the brightest white you can find. Moving on to my next tree, now I will add this grey with blue undertone and mix it with dark green and add some lighter green for the contrast. Fiber might be sticking to your fingers like it just did to mine, that's completely normal. Don't worry and don't get frustrated, just take your time, enjoy the process and you got this. I'm leaving it in these parts where you can see how I'm dealing with angles and edges of my triangles just so you can see how I'm trying to pull the fiber and guide it in direction I want to see it. Just remember that you can take your time and pull the fiber to make a straight line or angle and really watch your fingers because it's really easy to stab yourself here. Here I'm adding the natural white I used for the sky for the blending before I add my contrast green. Again, I want to remind you that you can use any colors you like, but this tree right here will stand between two bigger ones and I want it to be really bright. So I will create it using different shades of blue, but really light blue will be the dominating one. I'm also adding tiny amounts of this grey with blue undertone and this color is really interesting. It's almost dark green but it's more teal-ish and I'm also adding a little bit of teal on top of it. And as it's brighter in colors, for the snow effect and blending, I will use bright white. Here is another example how you can change your mind during the process. I was about to move on to the next tree, but then I realized that this one is a bit too even in height with its neighbors. So I'm just now taking the colors I used before and making it taller. 
I'm showing you these examples to hopefully encourage you to make your own artistic decisions. Wool paintings really don't have set rules in place, especially abstract ones like this one, and you can be really free in your choices of shapes and composition and colors to use. So now I have showed you the basic techniques and I will now just leave a little footage of me felting the rest of the trees and we will talk in the next key moment. Next step I think is really important because trees are actually not shaped like triangles. We need to add a little bit of separation to create individual branches or at least to create a look that would resemble individual branches. So now I'm taking tiny amounts of the white carded wool and I'm adding tiny white spots on random places on the sides of my triangle trees. You can wrap the wool between your fingers a little bit, this will make it easier to control. And I'm really trying to felt in one spot to create a little white dot. I will now do this to all trees I have created. Here is comparison, I think after this treatment my trees look way more natural. Now we are going to add another line of trees and it will be further away behind these ones we just created. As they are further we don't see the silhouette that well anymore and this will be super easy. You already know the shape of the tree by now. 
and you can just lay down your wool. I'm choosing really bright colors like this yellow and now I'm using my needle to roughly create a shape of a tree. Remember that you can lightly pull the wool using your needle, just don't be too harsh and don't bend it, never. Be really, really light. And here you can see I have created a silhouette of a tree. And now I will do the same in every spot I see. So here I have spot between two trees, one I have already felted, one will be in the front row. And now I'm adding additional silhouette in the background. I want this row of trees to be really bright and magical, so I'm using bright colors like orange, yellow, a little bit of blues, purples and reds, but you can always choose your own color palette. If something feels super bright at any moment, just take your background color, lay it on it and felt it down. This will really help to blend things. And here is my results. Now we can move on to work on the trees in the foreground. I want this first row of trees to be really bold and not to blend with the rest of our forest, so I will use really dark and bold colors. This is the largest tree we have, so I want it to be green. You will see me now lay out multiple shades of green in the shape of triangle and then felt it down just like we did before. One thing I would like to mention is don't be afraid to use your scissors. Here I'm using wool locks, the end that is really tangled together and I couldn't separate the fibers with my fingers, so I just use scissors to cut off the amount I need. When you're felting, of course it's better to try to stay in guidelines we have in place for the bottom of our tree. But if you accidentally go over the line, don't worry. We will add the snow later on and this will help us to clean up everything that has to be cleaned. To add a little bit more dimension to my tree, I'm adding tiny amounts of really warm yellow in random places. This time I have decided to finish off each of the trees before I move to the next one. So now I'm taking tiny amounts of the background color I used, that was the natural white core wool, 
I used for the sky. And now I'm adding small amounts on random places on both sides of my tree, just to make it look more natural and look like it has some branches. You will also see me laying it on the tree like this and that will create snow effect. There is no exact science in it, just try it for yourself, try to lay the wool and felt it down if you don't like how it looks. After a few steps you're still able to pull it off. And you can always use your scissors if you feel like you added too much. Here I'm lifting part of the wool and just cutting it off. What I don't like about my tree now is the proportions. It looks really tall, but the base isn't wide enough. So to fix this, I'm using darker colors on the base to make it more heavier looking. When I'm happy with my tree, we can move on to the next one. Don't forget to gently lift your piece from your mat from time to time. I will now speed up the video a bit, because this wool painting took me more than 3 hours and I don't want this video to be so long. But I do know that for some, especially for beginners, it's really important to see the color choices someone makes and how they lay out the wool, so I will definitely leave this footage here. But if you don't want to see it, feel free to use chapters to jump to the next section, where we will be adding the snow. Also, please leave a comment and tell me how you like this type of the video, because this is my first 2D tutorial ever, and I would really love to hear what's working for you, what you like and what you dislike, because I would really love to improve. Okay, now with this tree I really struggled for a while. I changed my mind for the color scheme multiple times and it took me some layering and changing colors and mixing them up until I got the result I liked. I think it's important to include this footage so you can see that it's not that easy sometimes and it's okay to mess up and change your mind. Needle felting pictures is really forgiving and you can just add new layers and mix new colors to fix everything you don't like. Also, if you get stuck or frustrated at any point, I would suggest you walk away from the piece a little bit and come back with a fresh eye. It really helps me when I get to these places.
When the trees are complete, it's time to add the snow. It's actually going to be really easy. First, we will add the darker parts and then add the rest of the highlights. I'm starting by laying this brown along the line that marks the closest peak of the snow we have right now. 
I don't want to add too much, so I'm really working with super thin layer stretching the fiber out. To soften these shadows, I'm going to use the natural carded white I used as the base for the sky. I'm working in thin layers and laying this wool over the shadow I just added. This will help with the blending. And now I'm following it with wool that's blend of white and natural brown. I do realize that you might not have this wool, as it's from my local wool shop, but you of course can always blend some colors yourself or use the colors you have in your stash. You will see if they're fit just by laying them out like this. I'm again adding the warm white I used for the sky and now is the most important part. We are adding the bleached white on top, so the brightest white you can find Again, I'm working in small sections and focusing on the part of my painting which is nearest to the bottom of my trees. I'm using my multi-needle tool as this is a bigger section without specific details and as you can see the shadows will become darker and the highlights will become brighter. But don't worry, you are always able to add some more fiber in places you would like to change. And here I'm doing exactly that. I feel like this part is a bit dark, so I will add a little bit more highlights. Now I'm carefully lifting my piece from the mat and moving to the new section, which we need to fill. I'm basically repeating the same steps. This time we will add the highlights after we felt down all the middle tones and shadows. So that's basically the only difference, because I want to make some changes in the composition using the highlights. But for now, we are laying down the shadows and the core wool I used for the sky to create the base for our snow. And with the magic of editing, we have already felted down the wool we just laid out. Now it's time to add the highlights. Now I'm using my brightest white and first following the line we have here that marks the peak. I also want to split up this darker section here and I'm now adding this super bright white to change the composition a bit. Now this section is completely covered with snow and for the final touches I'm going in with the bleached white again. I just feel like it's needed in some of the sections to add a little bit more highlight and make the snow really bright. Carded wool works the best for this because it blends with the rest of the fiber beautifully and you don't have to worry about accidentally adding harsh lines. And here is my picture when I have finished my felting. I spent around 30 minutes just felting all over the image, making sure that fiber is really secured. Now we can move on to the framing.
To frame my felted picture, I'm taking the inner hoop and placing it on the table. Then I'm laying my felt picture on top of it and I spend some time aligning the picture to the hoop. Then I'm carefully putting the outer hoop on top of my picture, making sure that I align it straight. This is really crucial moment. In case you are pulling your piece a bit like I'm here, make sure that you are gentle. I'm closing the hoop using the screw that's on top of it. I was silly and accidentally went out of the frame completely during this part, but what I'm doing here is cutting off the excess felt sheet. I left around 2 cm wide edge here and we will use it now for finishing the back. I have threaded my needle that matches the color of the felt sheet I'm using and now I will just go around my felt piece with a simple stitch. I'm pulling the thread from time to time and the felt wraps around the inner hoop. That's the finish we are looking for. Please let me know in the comments how you feel about today's tutorial and are you going to needle felt your own winter landscape? See you in my next video!